Good morning. We're here today to talk about a new project in the Kubernetes ecosystem, sponsored by the Serving Working Group, called the Gateway API Inference Extension. It takes any Kubernetes gateway and turns it into an inference gateway. And an inference gateway helps large platform teams, small platform teams, self-host large language models efficiently in production. It's informed by our experiences at Google and ByteDance, and we're very excited to talk to you today about it. 10 years ago, someone told me that Kubernetes wasn't going to be relevant to the majority of users. We'd all be using functions as a service, or maybe 12-factor managed platform as a service uh, in the cloud. Now, obviously, as judging by all of us here, they were wrong. But there was a seed of truth in that. It wasn't yet clear that the majority of large platform teams would have a diverse range of workloads, and that they would need and demand the flexibility from, of Kubernetes, as well as depend on a rich ecosystem of composable automation. There's a similar timeline going on in AI today. Two years ago, it seemed that all models would be proprietary. In the last year, open models have dramatically closed the gap. Because larger models are more flexible and smaller models are more efficient to serve, we believe there is a meaningful and durable trade-off between very smart frontier models and smaller, predictable building block open models. So we expect everyone, hopefully, will eventually need to serve open models for efficiency at scale, while still continuing to depend on cutting edge models for time to market. What flexibility and composable automation will we all need when models are a fundamental part of our applications? That's exactly the question that we started the Serving Working Group in Kubernetes to answer a year ago at KubeCon EU. And just like in the beginning of Kubernetes, we depend on experienced platform teams looking to build the next generation of their platforms to guide us. We were very fortunate that ByteDance was ready to build the next version of their platform, and they chose to do it in the open with us. Running LLM in Kubernetes sounds simple in theory, but in practice, it's still challenging. Let's dive into several production issues that shows LLM inference challenges are truly unique. The first plot is from a ByteDance production LLM service, capturing the daily request distribution. So as we can see, the request variation is spiking. The input prompt size vary widely, and the output lengths are unpredictable. This actually highlights one of the biggest differences between traditional microservices. Each request is different. Here's another demonstration. We can see sudden strikes in GPU compute activity, even under constant QPS. So at that, at that time, we figured it out. A batch of requests with super long uh, prompts sneak in. So for LLMs, it's not just the read of the request that matters, but also their shape, the length of the prompts, the number of the generated tokens, and the prompt structure. These all significantly affect the GPU load and make it unpredictable. Let's see another challenge. In ByteDance, we serve many models in production. Well, their traffic patterns vary widely. Some models are critical production models, while others are experimental with near zero traffic. Given how resource intensive these models are, this kind of traffic screw makes the problem even more problematic. It also makes the lifecycle management and resource allocation extremely challenging and highlight the need for resource usage-aware orchestration rather than just relying on static deployments. Another ch uh, challenge we face is hardware heterogeneity. Due to the machine delivery timelines, quota policies, and availability requirements, our inference clusters commonly end up with a mix of different GPU types. As shown in the table, in 15,000 GPU clusters, we have over eight GPU types. Even the heterogeneous pool help us serve a range of different workloads. We noticed it brings the complexity. Sometimes our model has to run on different GPU types due to the capacity issues. Well, due to GPU's different T-flops and memory bandwidth, it's very hard to abstract the way those hardware differences, which makes the management like routing even more difficult. All of these challenges, like different request shape, model traffic screw, or hardware heterogeneity, 
directly impact one shared infrastructure layer, which is routing. And that's why it becomes a bottleneck we have to rethink. To handle the unique challenges of LM inference, we need a new class of routing solutions that go beyond traditional load balancers. Binance and Google have been working together over the last year to pull our experiences in serving to make Kubernetes better for LLM inference. What we found is that LLM serving success really depends on three things, denser, faster, and automated. It all comes down to the self-hosted LLM serving. That teams need more control, flexibility, and speed than ever. So let's get started by digging into the first part, denser. LoRa, which stands for low rank adaptation, is a technique to fine tune the large pre trained model efficiently. The core idea about the LoRa is to adapt the large pre trained model to specific tasks without needing to change the entire model weights, but just a small set of the parameters called adapters. So these adapters commonly uh, only add 1% of the storage and memory overhead compared to the original model weights. Well, at the same time, it can maintain the uh, pr uh, efficiencies and accuracies without any loss. Uh, during the training phase, LoRa frees the uh, original model ways and only fine tune the two small metrics A and B. And uh, in the inference phase, it gets the output from the traditional uh, model and uh, merge with the multiplications of A and B to get final uh, inference results. So that's the basic of LoRa. Even LoRa gives the resource uh, efficiencies and the model flexibilities. Managing it in Kubernetes is surprisingly challenging. Why? Because LoRa has to be loaded alongside the base model. So that means LoRa cannot be deployed in separate containers. This breaks the Kubernetes principles. Right now, every single container may serve multiple models. That also brings the problems to the uh, request the routing. And the original base model uh, service cannot be used to find the LoRa anymore. And load balancer becomes even challenging, especially multiple LoRa's contend for the shared GPU resources within the same pod. Luckily, we solve these problems in production. Let's use a concrete example from Bydance to illustrate the benefits of denser deployment. In Bytance, we have many database products like to integrate AI capabilities to enhance user productivity and lower the learning curve. Text to SQL is one of the most popular AI capabilities that translate the uh, natural language to SQL queries. In Bytance, we fine tune the DeepSeq 33B model to support our text to SQL use case. However, we have many business lines. They provide the SQL like query scenarios such as log search or elastic search. Well, the query structure is very similar to SQL, but the syntax and the semantics differ significantly. So each scenario needs their own uh, fine tuning model. However, if we support all these scenarios with dedicated GPUs, that would be costly. To address this uh, resource issue, we adopt the LoRa adapter solution. We fine tune all these models in LoRa way and packing all the uh, SQL like adapters into one shared DeepSeq models. By following this adapter sharing and routing practice, we can deploy the new adapters in seconds, achieve 1.5 to 4.7x GPU cost saving under different traffic conditions. So in this setup, the gateway plays a key role in minimizing the number of the model servers and intelligently select the least busy instance. ByteDance's experience mirrored broad feedback from GKE's generative AI customers. Large models are slow, and latency is important. Models generate output tokens converted to text at word or subword boundaries a bit below human reading speed. That's great for chatbots, but doesn't work so well for other use cases. To hit a specific latency objective in online serving, you need to understand your traffic distribution in terms of input and output tokens. You need to choose a foundation model sized to have acceptable quality at the lowest compute cost. Select an accelerator configuration for both your model and your traffic that is cost effective. And reserve enough accelerators to handle your base load and hopefully cover your burst load. And sending more requests to an accelerator at the same time increases throughput and the latency of all other requests, leading to the curve up here. 
So is your latency tolerance, not just your traffic load, that determines the cost to serve. We worked with teams trying to solve this problem in, with multiple variables repeatedly. New models, new hardware, better software, and increasing prompt and output links all led to high toil. How can we help optimize production serving? We start where it hurts the most, where the very nature of large model serving leads to wasted resources, and a human can't be in the loop, load balancing. We are moving from microservices and web apps with very small and very predictable requests to very expensive and highly variable LLM queries. Round robin load balancing doesn't cut it anymore. Some accelerators would sit idle, and some requests would be stuck waiting longer to get processed. We need to look at each request and estimate where it will fit. We also need to know how full the servers are and how sending one more request to that server will impact the latency of all other requests. We believe we can automate a significant amount of the toil in generative AI serving just based on these two ideas at the load balancer. Model the cost of an incoming LLM request and how it'll impact other requests on that server, and build a real-time snapshot of the performance of each backend by continuously gathering metrics, capturing the complex relationships between hardware, concurrency of traffic, and client visible latency. The extra CPU time spent gathering metrics and precisely scheduling requests lets us use more of the accelerator and expose a better operational view to the service owner. Even with just the simplest version of this loop, we see good results. As the number of model servers grows, random load balancing of non-uniform requests increases the chance that one model server is going to get multiple very long requests in a row. Since a model server needs GPU memory to generate output tokens, when memory fills up, that model server has to stop accepting new requests, which increases latency. Just by steering requests to the model server with the most unused GPU memory, we can achieve over 30% higher QPS at constant latency over a uh, predictable traffic load, getting us closer to the maximum utilization of the accelerator. And this is just a representative chat agent workload. The more workloads you add to a shared set of model servers and the more traffic patterns that overlap, the benefit of an algorithmic approach to load balancing increases. While we focused on a single dimension for optimization here, we both see a huge number of possible uh, optimizations in research and ecosystem that could be integrated. But how can we bring a highly distributed ML ecosystem together? We're here at KubeCon because what needs to be done is more important than algorithms or hardware. We need common ground for operationalizing large models as just another workload. If we're all going to be running large models in production as a fundamental part of our application infrastructure in a few years, we need to identify the APIs and components that can be standardized and reused. We need common ground to bring the latest research to production and a common framework for innovation that everyone can take to production. If there's a standard, dynamic, and extensible load balancer, it's Envoy. We chose to build our architecture around Envoy because we knew it would work both with and without Kubernetes, and the rich ecosystem of the Gateway API would ensure our extension could avoid duplicating all of the regular load balancing features that LLM service owners also need. We use the standard Envoy ext proc callout mechanism to decouple our algorithms from the load balancer. You can deploy them independently. This also gives us the freedom to have multiple implementations and to allow for forking and experimentation when very large platform teams need something that the open source project doesn't provide yet. We also work to standardize the metrics we would need in the top model servers so that operators have a consistent experience across the ecosystem and our scheduler would need to do less. Our focus is automating the boring parts of going to production with LLMs and bringing you the best of ML research. We plug into a broad set of gateway solutions. We don't have any opinion on how you deploy your model servers. We build in support for LoRa, for pr prioritization and fairness, and for standard model rollouts so you can safely share your model servers between many different workloads for higher utilization. We want to be a load-bearing part of your serving infrastructure, orchestrate all of us can depend on, an ecosystem driving optimization, and the control you need over your production journey. Yeah, 2025 makes the year of production scaling. Leading inference uh, projects like VLM and Control Plane Airbricks, SG Long, and TensorRT have all prioritized large-scale deployment in their roadmaps 
putting efficient, scalable inference at the heart of their strategies. So the Gateway API inference extension project will play a critical role as the foundation for LLM-aware load balancer in Kubernetes, unlocking intelligent traffic control for LLM workloads. Looking ahead, we'll focus on uh, uh, enabling a full suite of uh, production readiness features, including fairness for multi-tenancies, heterogeneous weighted routing, adaptive SLO-driven routing, and KV cache aware routing to support production workloads at scale. And with that, we'll turn it back to you. We hope that you try the, if you're thinking about LLM serving in production, give us a try, give us feedback, and help become part of the community. Thank you. Thank you guys.